and the pastors and the wives. And their families. Thank you, Brian. That, that is a huge thing. Um, let, me, let me just add to that. In May, we're, you know, uh, as you all know, we've done, a couple years ago, we've been doing a once a year, pick a family and just show up and be a blessing at their house. Uh, well, this May, we're, we, we've chosen to be a blessing for the Paul Free family. And, and, and you go, why, why Paul Free's? They're healthy, they got kids. Well, Frank leaves in, in like six, seven weeks for a year. And literally with, actually we back up, he was sent home from the, from the base last night. Apparently somebody on the base was, was come down, it was sick. They don't know if coronavirus yet or not, but he's got to wait five days. So they're, he's back home and they're staying at home today and, and not going anywhere for the next few days, just to be safe. But when he gets activated to go, uh, he literally only has like five days off between now and the time he ships. And, and so we've chosen his family to go and be a blessing to in probably the third week of May, the weekend after Mother's Day, and, and just show up and all hands on deck because they have projects they need finished, all of the above. So, but yeah, just what you said, that's, that's going to be a, a great day for our church family to shine. It'd be just to be a blessing to somebody. So yeah, it's, that's awesome to hear. Amen. Anybody else? Uh, I know we have families not here this morning uh, for the coronavirus. And let me, let me just emphasize, and I'll do it again next hour or two. Uh, if you're sick, stay home. Uh, if you're exposed, anybody's sick, stay home. And, and, and but um, and the, the last couple of days I had folks say that, well, man, you're just not concerned about it. I'm like, you don't know how much behind the scenes I've looked and watched and and, and call and emails, and, and even with emergency management, uh, I'm a, a pod coordinator, which means that if they would go into complete shutdown, um, I won't be here, I'll be running a pod somewhere. And, and, and you look at that and think that uh, a pod is a, a portable distribution site uh, for narcotics, you know, if, if whatever the drugs may be, or, or swabbing testing station, and, and, and so, uh, I'm doing all due diligence, and, and you know, look at everything involved, and we just need to be cl clean. Uh, we need to, need to be do what we do, and um, yesterday I told a family that was really concerned that we're open today, I go, and I just asked them, I said, have you been to Walmart this week? And they go, what's that have to do with it? I said, has everything to do with it? Have you been to Walmart this week? And, well, their answer was yes, and I gave them, why? I said, because we're a whole lot cleaner than, than, than Walmart. And, 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 and then I made the emphasis about toilet paper. Do you know where most toilet paper, if you buy cheap generic toilet paper where it's made? China. So <laughs> with all that said, just be healthy and be clean. And, and we're, as long as we're legally allowed to be open, we're going to be open. And we are exempt. We are permitted to be open in the governor in the governor's new order. So, yes, sir. Yep. Uh, yeah, good, good call. Tim Hosey's brother is sick. He, he's not been confirmed coronavirus. Uh, he was in contact with somebody else that was. And, and, and him and his wife were isolated at home, and they, they have flu-like symptoms. But they have not tested positive yet. At least, at least that's my take on it anyways. Um, but they are sick. Um, here locally? No, I know nobody. Nobody at all. And, and so, pardon me? Yeah, amen. Amen. Um, are, are we live, guys? Facebook? Yeah. Um, and and just, we just need, need to be, be healthy, really, we do. 
Um, it, it's, you, you look, I don't want to downplay it because this is really serious. Um, influenza is really serious too. And, and we have a lot of people that die from influenza and we still keep operating and, and we just, we, we'll do all due diligence and keep um, sanitation clean, like between services today. Uh, everything will be re-sanitized, wiped down, uh, including pews, all wood, hard services, everything will be wiped down. Um, so it's just, you know, we're, we're doing all, the best we can to, to, to prevent it. Uh, but, but when you look at it, um, if you talk to the paramedics, and other folks out there, I mean, the suicide calls are going up. Uh, and and because, because there's mass, you look at the amount of people across the world that are not saved. And when you have no hope, suicide goes up. And, and so for us to be open is paramount, really paramount. Uh, because if we don't share, I mean, you go, oh, well, man, we can, we're on Facebook now. Yeah, I, I get that. But sometimes this is called a sanctuary for a reason. And, and, and if we were in ground zero, it would be a whole different story. But we're, we're, as of right now, we're not. We just need to be, be cleanly and, and do the best we can. Um, yeah, so, so, so with that, you know, pray, please pray for our country. And uh, our leaders are making wise decisions. And, and I just, just pray that some of the decisions being made are not for political gain. Um, and because that seems like they're the case already in some, some industry. Uh, and yeah, just, just be cautious. Uh, for me and my job, we're gonna still keep sharing Jesus. It's just what we're gonna do. Um, so, uh, so with that, still pray for Tim Hosey and his, his, his brother. Uh, he just came back from mission trip over in Southeast Asia uh, also. So uh, just, just pray for folks. Uh, we did have one family that I had just came back from a, um, a young lady had come back from a cruise and she asked if she'd come to church and said, hey, you just come back from a Petri dish? Probably not. Stay home on Sunday. And, and, and she's good with it. She, she's going to watch online. Uh, but, but seriously, you know, we're, we're going to do all due diligence and, and monitor it day by day by day. To, so to say that we're going to be completely open, if it would become against the law, we would shut down. But, but it's not against the law. So, so we're going to keep going as long as we can. Um, anything else? Let's pray. Lord, we humble ourselves before this morning to come, to learn, to share, to grow closer to you. But Lord, we want to give thanks in many ways. You know, when, you, when you hear a brother give a testimony for church folks coming out and helping him move, Lord, we, we have a loving church. And that's because of your love for us. You've given us your son as our Lord and Savior, and we are eternally grateful. But Lord, we're, our country is in a, in a time of need. Our world is in a time of need like we've never seen, you know, physically, spiritually. But Lord, when you look at all of our families, and we have folks that are home right now, Lord, that, that, are, that are struggling, and, and they just need that hope and peace, and we just have to come to you through it and for it. But when you, when you have unspoken requests, Lord, and even us as a church, you know, God's good, you're good. And we just need to come to you and, re, and, and keep closer to you than we've ever been. The folks that are, if anybody's sick, Lord, I just pray that you, know, you continue to be with them and keep them safe. But Lord, you just keep us focused too. Because the devil will do everything he can to keep us away from you. Lord, we just want to honor you. Be with us this morning. In your holy most precious name we pray, amen. Well, I quite possibly can, can say that, if you have Bibles while I'm talking, Romans the third chapter, 23rd, so we're gonna be this morning. Probably, quite possibly the toughest two weeks ever serving in this church was the last two weeks. And you're going, huh, why, what's going on? Uh, if you've not gone downstairs and seen a new carpet downstairs yet, please do. Uh, physically, that was the toughest two weeks. Building that, I would rebuild that whole building over again before I remove any more carpet downstairs. It was that tough. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, we had to actually run a commercial machine to come and tear the carpet up. Uh, we could not do it by hand at all, and it was, it was brutal. Um, but, but thanks to uh, Ron Clark, Bob Clark, uh, my brother Rich, uh, and a whole lot of persistence. 
and we, uh, we have a new carpet downstairs, and, and especially thanks to the folks that have um, been praying for us and, and blessed us financially to be able to do that. In Romans, the third chapter, in the 20th verse, it says this, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. This is Romans, third chapter, 20th verse. Verse 21, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is, is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When we look at this text, for all have come sinned and short of the glory of God, you, know, you, you hear preachers say that, um, brother, are you saved? Uh, and and it, then you you could drive down along the billboard and and, and I love traveling, especially if you go east, because some of the randomest things you'll see, uh, Jesus saved, huge billboard, Jesus saved, and, and then then you'll have one eight hundred whatever. And, and and but when I was amazed, the further east I go, do you know more billboards I see are about Muslims for converting to Muslims. If you go, next time you go, we go to Lancaster in a few weeks, Lord willing, when we travel, uh, as I'm driving a bus, or if David's driving a bus, I'll yell at every Muslim sign I see. It'll blow your mind. In fact, when we go in Pennsylvania, when we travel to Lancaster, uh, the last time I was over that way, I see more signs trying to get folks involved in, to being a Muslim than Christianity. But does Jesus save? Yeah, and you look and think, yeah, just the simpleness. We still had our teen outing on Friday night. And, 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 you, and you, you go, you still had the teen outing? Yes, we did. We had a great group of kids. You know what happened at midnight? A 14-year-old boy got saved. And, and you look at that and think, and even for Sunday school teachers and children church leaders in Awana, you, hear, you get that one, hey, Timmy just got saved. In, in the outside world, you know, we you know, sometimes sound like we're a, a bunch of religious radicals because we got so excited when somebody got saved. But we talk about being saved passionately. And, and, and far from being a, a backwoods rural message, this is a current valid message in all the world. It's called salvation. And it's the central message of God's word. And it's the very reason why Jesus came to earth to begin with. And from the Son of Man, in Luke 19.10, it says, has come to seek and to save, which is lost. And the entire Bible tells a story of God's saving work. Even the book of Romans, of Paul's greatest doctoral, doctoral treaties are about salvation. And the focal passage that covers the uniqueness of the highlights we see today. Let's look again. In verse 20, therefore the deeds of the law, there should be no flesh justified in the sight for by the law and the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law have manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe. There is no difference. The most prominent religious beliefs in the world is that good works gets us to heaven. Does good works get us to heaven? Not one bit. And, and, and ironically, the same beliefs uh, are, are, are so erroneous, it's amazing. Because in the middle of it, they'll, they'll, they'll throw Jesus in there when they need him. And, and you think that if it were true, how many good works would it take to satisfy God? Think about that. If we, what would we have to do to satisfy God? And, and, and yet, you know, we know when we've done enough, right? You've served just enough this week. You're good to go. Some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy. Good, because I am. <laughs> that makes, total, makes no sense at all for one, one of us or any of us to say, you have done just enough works today to be saved or to maintain your salvation. And, and, and I think in, in reality, worse could never, ever 
get us to heaven because no one could live up to God's standards. We can't do it. Every single time we fall short of the glory of God. And the absolute righteousness of God requires and is revealed through Jesus when Jesus said, be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's Matthew 5, 47. And, and, and now, can we be perfect like the heavenly Father? No, but should we strive to be perfect like the heavenly Father? Every day. And, and so where does the Old Testament law come in? And, and, and yet, weren't, weren't Old Testament saints saved by law? No. And, the, and, and you think that even in Galatians verse 20, the entire point of the entire book of Galatians wraps it up in verse 20. And, and neither of the law nor making sacrifices ever took away sin. Look in Hebrews 10.4. He wants music to a pastor's ears. Pages of the Bible will be in turn. Hebrews 10, 4. For it is not possible that one blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. So even in the Old Testament standard, there, it, yeah, it still doesn't ever take away the sin in as far as the law, but the law was written to express God's standard. By comparing ourselves to it, we see just how far we miss it. When you, when you really look and you apply even just the Ten Commandments, how far we really miss it. And, and you think, well, man, I never broke any of the Ten Commandments. We have a perfectly good order down front. <laughs> but when we compare ourselves to God's Word, we fall short every step of the day. And, and, and for this reason, we need to... to we need the righteousness of Christ in our life, which, which does meet God's standard. And it's from God's works, his good works, not our works. But we have to maintain and try to be the best that we possibly can. In, in verse 23, back in, back in the original text, it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And yeah, I should have told you, keep your fingers in Romans, Romans third chapter. But when you, when you look for Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and, and you look at the original not first, first verses, the apostle drew from various psalms in his vivid description of man's sin. Our very nature is sinful. Uh, no one is righteous. No one, is, no one understands. No one seeks God. And no one does good. Wow, it got quiet. <laughs> Let me say it again. No one is righteous. No one understands. No one seeks God and no one does good. And you go, well, wait a minute. I try to do good. I try the best I can to seek God. And, and I try to understand. But remember, even God's word says that some, some things you won't ever understand. And, and, and then you look at the original one. No one is righteous. Yes, because we all fall short of the glory of God. But, but when we look at the evidences of evil in this world, there is much decay in our lives. And, 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 you, and you look at when we speak outside of church, yeah, and, and you look at some of the stuff that's just the poison that comes out. It, it, it's amazing to see what comes out, and you afterwards you go, oh, did I really say that? Or better yet, when somebody paraphrases what you just said, and you went, no, I didn't say that. Is that what you... And you look, and then we have this word called hatred. Hatred is intense. And depending on where you live regionally, hatred runs deep in the roots of our country and throughout the world. And you look and think, our actions are so arrogant and destructive sometimes. You have feet that run and shed blood. Think about it. And yet following the wretched paths of, of, of wickedness, many don't have any thoughts of peace. And, and then you throw pride. And, and look in verse 18. As, as I turn my Bible, let me go back to Romans. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And you think, 
pride fierce, fearlessly shakes a fist at God. And, and yet, we get so arrogant. E- even with coronavirus, you know, that we can buy all the hand sanitizer in the world and we got it. No, we still need Jesus. We, you know, bottom line is, we need Jesus. And, and, and you see all the drama behind it and you think, well, we, we still need Jesus. And, and look at verse 23. Again, what does it say? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look at verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God had set forth to be propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and a justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting that? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that man is justified by faith without the deeds of law. Fortunately for us, God has proved a means of reaching his standard apart from our human efforts, despite of our sinfulness. And he provided a perfect son, a perfect source, and has demonstrated his perfect righteousness. And he did that, why? As a substitutionary atonement for our sins. Simply put, here's how it works. Romans 3.23, all have sinned. Romans 6.23, the penalty of sin is death. Ezekiel 18.20, so the sinner must die. All have sinned, the penalty of sin is death, and all sinners must die. But God, by his grace, a lot of substitute. And yet he declared the innocence that may die on behalf of the guilty. And you look at Christ and think that the innocence has died because of the, the guilty. And it happens every day. And I wish I still had this book, book in text. It's called I Die Daily. I had a copy and I wound it out, and it's gone. <laughs> and it is what it is. Uh, it's an old text. It's called I Die Daily. It's not in print anymore. I looked online. I looked to see if there's any version of it. It's not out there. And, and, and you look at it, and it was actually a requirement of seminary. And here's what it was. Seven days a week for an entire semester, you read the book, front to cover. It's a small reader, 35, 40 pages. Every day you read it. And then you had to send an email to Dr. Kemp that said, I have read, I I die daily. And and, and I'll never forget the first time I I sent an email that said, the first day, I have read, I I die daily. And he he replied something like, you have testified in front of me and God Almighty that you have sufficiently read, I die daily. And, And then every time, every day, now, keep in mind, I'm not the only seminary kid that was going through. He's doing this every person that would send it, and every day he replied the same set, cut and paste. <laughs> and, and be, because it was a requirement to graduate the class, and, and, and guarantee you get those days where you're just going, man, I just don't have time. And, oh, and, and you made sure by the time you read that, you realized that the emphasis that I die daily. Why? Because Christ died. And, and, and you're looking to think that it, it really reflects that we must give of ourselves for him. And, 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 and you, we have to deny ourselves for him. Why? Because the innocent had died. The innocent Jesus had died. And, and, and the illustration in generations of the Old Testament and his sacrificial system is it, a fulfillment for once and for all death of Christ. And that's Hebrews 10, 11, and 12. But the sacrificial lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world it, it, it is illustrated in John 1, 29. So when a lost sinner trusts Christ by faith, God accepts the perfect righteousness of Christ as a substitute for the weak. And not just that, for the failing. The substitute for the insufficient efforts to be made right to a holy God. Look at verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded, but what law? Or of works? Nay, 
is the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that man is justified by faith without the deeds of law. Verse 29, and he, the God of the Jews only, is he not only the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law of faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. And you look at justifications, and you, and you really think of the, the justification and the justified of righteousness is always and only done through the blood of Jesus. And, and, and we look and think, if we were tried and tested every day, would we be guilty? And then of what? And, and, and to think the one that died would died for all, for all eternity. It, it, it's just, just mind-blowing to think 2,000 years ago, Christ died. But I'm going to ask, does he die every day? Yeah, yeah really. I mean, yeah, for, for once and for all, he died, and obviously his body was put in a tomb, and three days later he rose. And, 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 but you think that every single time that somebody repents, that somebody accepts Christ as their Lord and Savior, it takes us right back to the cross. And yet, well, when we die daily, and because we're guilty, and think that we've all sinned, and thankfully, by the grace of God, we can have eternity. But so, let's just take it back a little bit. When the question is asked, brother, sister, are you saved? Uh, the part of it is, I heard this just the other day, on Thursday. Um, it, it was awesome. And we, because it was asked for a young man downstairs. And I said, brother, are you safe? From a pastor friend of mine stopped by. And he like went, almost. And I'm like, I'm like that was awesome because he put it on a spot. He made him think. And he, he's just, just, just amazing to see. Almost. And, and, and you look and you, and you realize that outside this world, this world, inside these doors, there are many, 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 many that are that close. Think about it. That are that close from accepting Christ their Lord and Savior. They're that close from being saved. They're that close from surrendering to the Lord. And, and then we gotta look at the saved. There are many that are saved that are that close to submitting and answering to the will of God in their life. They're that close. And you think, is that close good enough? And we minimize, we justify, we try to establish, but is it good enough? And, 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 and you look at just the bottom line is just this. When people are getting saved, that's good enough because God's getting the glory. Uh, we were supposed to have baptisms today. We canceled. Um, two for work schedules, and the other two were, were actually going and working in another area today for first responders. And, and, and you look at that and think, so we have four baptisms that we're going to reschedule. Um, what are we, one, probably just got off about an hour, or hour and a half ago from working a 24-hour shift. And I'm like, man, just, just wait, we'll reschedule it. And, and, and you look and think, when we continue to go, we continue to share, are people getting saved? I had a family here on Friday. Uh, he's he, um, a young man who's been in ministry for a couple decades. Uh, he, he's an evangelist that, that will probably, or will, be here in August uh, for a summertime program, uh, for, for an evening of, of worship. His family, 18-year-old uh, son, two, 21, 23-year-old daughter, his wife, are incredible musicians and, and, and can sing like a, phenomenal. They came and recorded here on, on Friday. And they came and um, pastor had asked me if, we could, if I could record for him. I said, yeah, we can record. And, and I go, what are you thinking? He goes, guess what it costs to record a song in a studio? $2,500 a song. So if you put a CD of 10 together, that's 25 grand. And this is through a Christian recording studio. And, and I go, so what do you need? He goes, 
He goes, he goes, can you record? I said, yeah, we can record. And, and, and so they came and they used our piano and they used um, two violins, just did a phenomenal job and, and, and sang. And, and uh, I thought they were only gonna sing a couple songs just for, for an intro and they go, how much can we record? They don't record as much as you want. Um, so I had my own concert on Sunday or Friday. Um, they ended up singing um, 10 complete songs um, and was playing with some other stuff and I'm saying, I'm going, if I would have known this, <laughs> I would have been, I threw one on, on live stream um, to see how it would work on live stream. And, and, and uh, but, so we recorded for them. We we're going to download and, and, and through software programs and get that, get that cleaned up and formatted for them. And, and, you, and you look at that thing, but they, they came and they're going, I'm talking to them. They go, so where are you going to next? And they go, we had the next four weeks of, of meetings canceled. Just shut down. And he preaches all over, all over the country. He goes, we're shut down for four weeks minimum. Uh, I go, really? And he, he goes, yeah, wife's going to preach. And he said, well, he said, we're done Easter. He said, we go to home church for Easter typically. And, and he said, it, the way things are looking, he said, if they cancel a ladies' function from Mother's Day, um, he said, it might be middle of May before he goes back on the road again. And, and, and you look at these, these folks said, so for this week, we're going to be trying to clean stuff up. I and mean, you look at it. And, and so he came here and he's going, can I tour your church? And I'm like, go, go ahead. I got guys working downstairs doing carpet. And, and um, he goes, pastor said you guys have been really doing stuff here. And I said, no, we haven't. And he goes, what do you mean? No, you haven't. And he goes, you know, with the autism room and new carpet, new building, and new paint. And I go, we haven't been doing anything. It's been God. And he went. I said, I said, same with you. I said, you came to a small church to do what? To share the gospel. And I said, have you had anybody saved this week? He said, I have one. I go, amen. And he goes, kid. Because I know some of the some of the, I'm looking at their website. Some of the places are going. I mean, they're they're pre, he's preaching in front of hundreds, if not thousands, and, and he was getting like 25. And I know he was like going, oh. And they canceled. Everything. I said, you have one safest week. That's awesome. And he went, I think about that. And, and, and so when we look at what we're doing and think, even in hard times like this, we've not seen anything like this before. Uh, have we seen anything yet? And, and you know, how long will it go? We don't know. But I will say this. Jesus still saves. And we need to do the best we can to continue sharing that Jesus saves. Just that simple. And, and, and whether it's tracks, and I'm going to encourage you, you all again later today. Uh, we have a bunch of new tracks out there. I would seriously love if you have a shut-in or if you have a family member that is in panic mode or just needs encouragement, and even if you don't go visit them, which still blows my mind out of everything, guess what still, do, still runs? The postal service. And, and you got mail coming from all over the world that is handled by who knows who. And, but, but anyways, um, so stuff your envelopes with tracks and mail them to them, be an encouragement. And no better way to, to keep people going than sharing Jesus. And so we look at the word again, salvation. It's just a word, right? It's life-changing. The thing about it, it is life-changing. And, and, and when, you, when you look at this times like these and think, have we ever experienced stuff like this before? Different formats. Um, just think of the reservation. Yeah, man, they got wiped out with smallpox. Uh, so we've had diseases before. And, and, and we just gotta have faith in God. But while through it all, we need to make sure that we continue to share salvation through Christ alone. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for giving us the word salvation. Thank you for giving us the word saved. And it all comes through you, by you, and from you. You've given us your son as our Lord and Savior. You allow him to come and live a, a righteous life with no imperfections. 
to give a complete sacrifice of his blood for the remission of our sins. You let him die on a cross. You let him be buried and rise again. And that gives us the hope to get through every day. Gives us the peace and comfort knowing that you are a gracious God. Lord, in this time, whether you know, as folks come for morning services, Lord, those will be staying home, Lord. I just pray that you keep us healthy, keep us smart, and Lord, just, just let us honor you through it all. In your holy, most precious name we pray. Amen.